Harris, you want some Gougere? Rude. <laughs> All right, okay. See if I offer you a Gougere next time. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my kitchen in my cabin. And today is actually the first of a two-part episode suite that we have for you, all about pad a choux. It is really a base recipe that you can use to make so many delicious classic French pastries. We're gonna make cheesy puffs, aka gougere, profiteroles, eclairs. We're gonna start by making the pad a choux and then the possibilities are endless. So pâte à choux, it's a really interesting kind of unique dough because it's cooked on the stove first and it is enriched with a ton of eggs. It has a very, very high proportion of eggs because that is what gives the dough this very strong like puffing effect and it hollows out and you can fill it. Maybe you caught our croquembouche episode where we made a bunch of cream puffs, dipped them in caramel and stacked them into a cone. You might want to start thinking about doing one that's like more of a dome or like just a smaller cone. All right, which way is the good side? <laughs> It's not quite the croak and bush tower. It's like a croak and ball. That's like way at the end of the spectrum of complicated things to make with pâte à choux. So today we're just breaking it down and showing you some of the simpler, more classic preparations. So special equipment. I have a saucepan here because unlike basically any other pastry dough, we actually start by cooking it on the stove top. So it is really kind of a unique style of dough. I have a saucepan. A wooden spoon is like a classic thing you use to mix pâte à choux that you could use a heat proof spatula. And then I have my stand mixer fitted with the paddle. I often make it by hand. You don't need a stand mixer, but it does just bring the dough together really quickly. I have milk, water, a little bit of kosher salt, a little bit of sugar, just a tablespoon, seven tablespoons unsalted butter, a cup of flour, and six large eggs. And that's it. And this is just for the base. So we are going to, in some cases, add things to the dough. Um, in other cases, sort of do a particular shape for forming it, and then we use this dough to make all of our pastries. So the first step for pâte à choux is to combine everything but the eggs and the flour in our saucepan. So I have a half cup each milk and water. It's very typical to see half and half milk and water for pâte à choux. And the milk adds a lot of richness to the dough. I have to say, I really like not, I'm not someone that eats a lot of raw dough at all but pâte à choux, I love raw pâte à choux. It's like something that I just like can't stop eating it. Half teaspoon, kosher salt. Pâte à choux can go sweet or savory, so I do just enough salt. A tablespoon of sugar. Again, same point, it doesn't make it sweet, but this is what encourages browning. Tablespoon granulated sugar. Seven tablespoons unsalted butter, so this all goes into the saucepan. And then it doesn't take much to bring together pâte à choux. Now I'm gonna bring my saucepan, my flour over to the stove and I'm just gonna bring this to a boil. So I'm gonna warm this up. I have it on medium, and I'm gonna just sort of sit here and stir until the butter melts, and then as soon as it starts to come to a boil, like I see active bubbling around the edge, I'm gonna add the flour. So you add the flour all at once, and then vigorously stir to bring together into a dough. You wanna be very careful about how much you cook the dough. You don't wanna undercook it because you have to really cook out the flour but you don't wanna cook it too much. So we'll talk about how to know when you're done cooking the pâte à choux. So I'm gonna add the flour all at once, and then you're gonna stir gently at first to bring it together. If you stir vigorously, you'll end up just flinging the flour out of the saucepan. And then as soon as it comes together, you stir vigorously. We want to beat this and bring it into a dough. So the idea here is that you're drying it out quite a bit, as well as cooking the flour. So you need to stir constantly. And I do this almost slapping motion with the wooden spoon, or I hit it against the side of the pot. And then I'm going to continue to cook it until I start to see a little bit of a shiny texture on the surface of the dough. So this will take several minutes. I would say at least, at least three minutes, possibly up to five, depending on the size of your saucepan and the strength of your heat. One thing you can do too is just kind of shake the saucepan. So the dough has definitely stiffened up a bit. It is holding together 
in a single mass. And it also has a little bit of a shininess to it. So the butter is kind of starting to exude. That's how you know you've driven off enough of the water. You are ready to take it off the heat and I'm gonna put it directly into my stand mixer bowl because this has to cool off a little bit before I add the eggs. So that's the next step. I'm gonna just use the paddle to like, just mix it a little bit, release any additional steam. Then I'm gonna take my eggs. I have six eggs. Now, every batch of pad shoe is a little bit different. Sometimes you make it the dough a little drier, sometimes it's a little wetter. Sometimes your eggs are different sizes. Like these are large eggs, but they're on the large side of large eggs. So you might not use all of them. I'm gonna show you how you know that you've added enough eggs and maybe you don't need the sixth egg. Maybe you only need five. So I'm gonna start by cracking the eggs one at a time into the bowl. Be sure to avoid any shell. Also, these are room temp, which is important. You want your eggs at room temp. So I'm gonna keep adding them one at a time letting it smooth out in between additions until the dough looks ready. Between the fifth and sixth eggs is probably when you wanna check your dough to see if you're at the right texture. This is in good shape. I know I'm not gonna need the sixth egg and I'll show you how I know that. When you lift up the paddle or the wooden spoon, the spatula, whatever you're using, you want the dough to fall off the paddle or the spoon and leave a V-shaped trail. So just like that, sort of a thin sheet that tapers to a point. You don't want it to be too stiff either. So this texture of like loose enough to kind of form this V-shaped trail, that's good. So I definitely don't want to add another egg because this has enough liquid in it. So this is our pad dough. This is the base for all of these different pastries we're gonna make. And now I'm gonna move into showing you how to do the first variation, which is gougeres, which is actually a savory recipe. One of my favorite things to make for a party. It is like, just, they're so easy to eat. It's like the fancier version of a potato chip. It's a cheesy puff made with Gruyere cheese. So I'm gonna move right into that. So additional ingredients you're adding to our pate choux base. I have some spices that I'm adding, a little kosher salt, just an extra pinch, half a teaspoon nutmeg, in this case a quarter teaspoon because it's a half recipe, and ditto quarter teaspoon of paprika and a pinch of cayenne for a little heat. Then I have a large egg, which I'm just gonna use for egg washing the puffs so that they get like really golden brown shiny in the oven and some grated cheese. This is five ounces. For a full recipe, it would be 10. I have a pastry bag. You don't need one. You could just sort of use two spoons to drop mounds of dough onto your baking sheet. It's up to you. Pastry brush for coating the dough in a little egg wash. So I'm gonna start by adding the spices because I want to give those time to distribute throughout the dough. Nutmeg is really classic. The other one's not so much. I want like a little bit of heat, so I'm just gonna stir that through. Now, if you're making a full recipe, you can do this while the dough is still in the mixer. So obviously that's just a lot easier. Or if you're doing like me, you know, make a half recipe, save the other half for something sweet. You get, kind of get a lot of bang for your buck. And a full recipe makes about 70, so you'll fill two baking sheets. And obviously it depends on the size of the puffs that you're making. I like the gougeres to be kind of bite size or like two little bites. Now I'm gonna add my cheese. So I'm gonna hold back about two ounces of the cheese for topping each little mound of dough so that the cheese bakes over the top of the puff in the oven and gets like crunchy and cheesy and delicious. So go ahead and fold in your cheese. So once you have a homogenous mixture, I'm gonna fill my piping bag. The piping bag just helps you make very even mounds. So I always fill my pastry bag this way. So I have it standing up in a glass and then I fold it down the sides because you wanna be able to work cleanly so you don't want like dough all around the sides as you're trying to squeeze it. And because I only have two hands, I use the glass to hold, prop it up. So then close up the bag. The pad of shoe is pretty thick, especially with the cheese added, so try to minimize big air pockets as you fill the bag. It would just make it a little harder to pipe. So I just twist to force the mixture down into the bottom. And I'm gonna snip off the point. maybe like a three quarter inch opening. Okay, so I'm going to pipe these across my baking sheet. 
and I'll make about 35 puffs. So I'll go in like a five by seven. Of course they expand quite a bit in the oven, but they puff up and out at the same time. So I would space them one and a half inches apart, holding it down and just extruding. What size do you think these are? Half of a peep. <laughs> That's not very precise. Maybe like tablespoon and a half size mounds. I'm gonna finish piping my mounds of dough across the baking sheet in a five by seven grid. I have my oven preheating to 425, and then before they go in the oven, we'll do a quick egg wash and a little topping of additional cheese. I didn't get like lovely even mounds because I had grated the cheese on the large holes of the box grater, so in some cases it just, just made it harder to pipe. I'm just using a wet finger to sort of just poke the dough, just even it out a little bit and get them into sort of nice high tight little mounds. And these are not perfectly even. You just want them to be relatively equal in size so that they bake at the same rate. The final step is to beat your egg and do a little egg wash. Use a larger bowl than this. I beat the egg until no streaks remain. So like all of that kind of thicker egg white is incorporated. And now you wanna be gentle because I don't wanna flatten the mounds too much, but you don't have to go over every last area of the dough, but just give it a dab. This adds shine. It adds a little golden color as it bakes and it also gives something for the cheese to stick to. I'm gonna save this egg wash for my future patachou pastries in episode part two. All I want is like a little, very little amount of cheese to sprinkle on top. This part takes like some discipline to distribute this amount of cheese over 35 small little puffs, but do your best. So you get the point. I'm gonna now finish coating them with egg, topping with the cheese. They're gonna go into the oven, middle rack. If I were baking two sheets, I'd have upper and lower thirds, but I just have the one. And I'm gonna immediately turn the temp down to 375 and bake until they're puffed and golden, brown on the bottom, 30 to five minutes. 30 to five minutes total. 30 to 35 <laughs> minutes total. <laughs> Things are off the rails. Does it, does it seem like it? It feels like it. Does it seem like it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like this one. Oh, good sound. Okay, let's take a look at them. So here I have Gougere. When you have made and baked proper pate choux, they're super light because they're hollow. So you can see they've puffed. The center is hollow. I love this little like crispy, lacy, cheesy edge. Something we've talked about on the show before. See my episode with Natasha Pickowitz where we made scones. And the bottom is nice and golden brown. It's dark, but not too dark. And I can just tell that this is gonna be like crunchy and delightful and soft and almost custardy on the inside. There's a kind of light webbing of the dough in the inside that is almost custardy and just like makes these a delight. All right, can I taste? You can. Okay. They smell terrific. Mm. All right, so take a look inside. Hollow. Fill, if you want to, you could fill them, but I think that actually kind of ruins what I love about Cougere, which is just the light crispness of this kind of cheesy bite. When do you have these? I could eat like a million of these. <laughs> I was, <laughs> when do I have them? I was going to say I have parties, but I never have parties. <laughs> I have these at the dinner parties in my mind. <laughs> it's okay. I really think that with the exception of pigs in a blanket, <laughs> this is the greatest party food there ever is. Ever is? Was? Will be. Sort of. <laughs> okay. Possibly with the exception of pigs in a blanket, for which I have a recipe in my book, this is the ultimate party food. They're like totally addictive. You kind of just keep eating them because they're so light and crispy and cheesy. And really, I think demonstrates for me all the amazing things you can make with patachou. And that is why we're devoting this kind of like extra special two-part episode to everything you can do with this amazing pastry. So thank you for watching this episode. Stay tuned next week for part two. We're gonna make eclair plus cream puffs, which is a recipe that I really love and I have a little special twist on it. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe.